hopefully you have a lean turkey this year or whatever you're <laughs> eating, but fatty foods, whether it's hams or bacon, for example, or other types of meals, um, are not the best for our pets. They taste good, and certainly that's why we like to eat some of them, but they're not the best for our pets. You know, even certain breeds would seem to be more prone to illness, whether it's our miniature schnauzers or the Yorkshire terriers, but there are some breeds that not only can get stomach upset, from eating fatty foods, just like anything they're not used to, but even inflammation of their pancreas called pancreatitis. And very similar how I discuss pancreatitis with pet owners, if you think about stomach upset, so you and I eat something that doesn't agree with us. Likely what we have is some sort of gastritis or gastroenteritis like we chatted about earlier. Just like that, pancreatitis is inflammation of the pancreas, like gastritis is inflammation of the stomach. And in a very similar way, there's no cure, there's no antidote, there's no magic pill to make pancreatitis better. If you think, for example, for yourself, for an upset stomach, it's maybe some Gatorade and maybe a, a Zofran for a nausea or a Pepsid AC, pancreatitis is in a similar way just supportive care. The problem is pancreatitis can, in theory, be a lot more severe than stomach upset because the pancreas ends up releasing all of these really inflammatory enzymes which irritate everything else in the belly cavity. So those dogs with pancreatitis tend to be a lot more um, clinically ill, a lot more sick, sicker, as well as being more sick for a longer period of time. So we definitely want to try to avoid that. And the simple thing, like we talked about earlier in this episode, is just keeping them away from the dinner table, keeping them away from counter surfing on your kitchen counter, and making sure we take out that garbage, and then ultimately making sure our family and friends that come over know it's not a good idea to feed them because we don't want them to get that fatty food and get that stomach upset or inflammation of their pancreas, that pancreatitis. And so, so typically, in a severe case of pancreatitis, how long of a hospital stay is a client expected for their pet? Because people think, oh, it's just vomiting in 24 hours will be good, right? That's a great question. And the first thing that I tell people is, you know, I'm sure you practice the same way. I treat the patient. I don't treat the paper. And what do I mean by that is there are radiologists. I, I love our radiologists at VSEC. But they can gauge the, the degree of inflammation of the pancreas on ultrasound, for example. And I have some dogs where there is severe inflammation of the pancreas and they're eating the next day. But I have some dogs that have mild inflammation of the pancreas and are in the hospital for a week. So it's always a little bit variable and I give myself a little bit of an out at the beginning of the conversation saying every patient will react differently. Certain breeds just seem to be hardier breeds and certain breeds seem to be a little bit more sensitive in general. But I would tell a family on average when we start a treatment plan, I would consider two to three days for my initial start. Because if they come in on vomiting on day one, that's my sort of diagnostic day, depending on what time of the day they come in. Day two, I'm trying to figure out, now I have my test results, hopefully I know it's pancreatitis, but now I'm trying to figure out how they're responding to my therapy. And is it safe for me to start a food trial. So let's just say they come in at noon on a Monday, I get my blood work back, I get my ultrasound back, and finally by the end of the day, I have a good idea of why Fluffy's not feeling well, it's pancreatitis. Then on Tuesday, I'm trying to figure out, did my medication work, is Fluffy well hydrated? Maybe Tuesday night, I can give Fluffy a little bit of food, see if he eats, keeps it down, and then still feels comfortable, is not lip licking or drooling or nauseous. And then maybe if he does well, he goes home on Wednesday. So you're kind of in that two to three day period of a best case scenario. So a textbook answer would be about two to three days for a mild case. Yeah, and I, I'm seeing the trend as, as, you, as you're experiencing, I'm seeing the trend of longer stays in hospital too, as things go. And it's so funny because you're talking about keeping family away and I'm thinking like, hey, Grandpa Joe, don't feed him that chicken. <laughs> Why, well, you always like know it? because you see that hand come under the table, right? <laughs> and you, and they start looking around like they don't, <laughs> Like all of a sudden they're admiring your artwork on the wall. <laughs> they're playing it cool, real cool, Grandpa Joe. We know what you're doing. And all of the dogs, there are six dogs yeah. under Grandpa Joe's table. And I didn't know silent. they loved it that and much. it's silent, right? right? <laughs> exactly. No one's barking anymore. There's no whining at the dinner table. So that's why it's best to keep them out of that room <laughs> and get away from that the, the garbage. Yeah, of course. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. 
You can listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. to Your Pet Matters on 107.7 The Bronx with me. If you missed that, we're podcasting on iTunes. All you have to do is search under Your Pet Matters.